When Moody's Investors Service announced to the world it might downgrade China, the lessons from Japan's deflationary nightmare were written between the lines in bold font. The same could be said of Tokyo, of course. Only now, 23 years after the Bank of Japan pioneered quantitative easing, are policymakers hinting they might be ready to take off the economic training wheels. Talk of BOJ, tapering, has sent the yen skyrocketing. But this week's big economic news in Asia was Moody's slashing Beijing's country's credit outlook. It dropped just a few weeks after Moody's also lowered Washington's rating outlook to negative, from stable. The warning to Beijing, though, seemed time to spur Chinese leader Xi Jinping's government to change course on debt before it's too late. The central worry, of course, is China's default-plagued property sector, a threat that echoes Japan's 1990s bad loan crisis. Another dynamic that alarms Moody's is hidden debt on which neither its analysts, nor Wall Street investors nor government ministries around Asia can get a clear answer. Those hidden IOUs could be sitting on the balance sheets of dozens of Chinese government-backed entities pivotal to infrastructure development. They're being racked up by municipalities issuing local government financing vehicles, or LGFVs, that often lack transparency. And there's the myriad layers financing schemes supported by the People's Bank of China. Now, add in signs that Xi's government is prioritizing fiscal and monetary stimulus over structural reform, a sign that China has reached its maximum pain tolerance for addressing debt troubles. Take the recent admission by PBOC Governor Pan Gongsheng that some economically battered regions in the Chinese North and West could face difficulties servicing local government debts. It was a rare moment of extreme candor by a top Beijing policymaker. Frightening, too, as Beijing ups pressure on the world's biggest banks, state-owned institutions, to backstop property developers risking default, and to ensure that developers can finish home and apartment complexes under construction. Though one can argue the ends may justify the means, this risky move would raise concerns about national service risk and credit risk in the medium term, warn economists at JP Morgan Chase & Co. Yet it's even more troubling when you view this moment through the lens of historical precedence. The ratio of credit to GDP for the non-government non-financial sector in China has now risen well above the peak in Japan and South Korea during their respective debt bubbles, says Diana Choilova at Enedo Economics. China is in uncharted territory. Korea has recently caught up with China but that spells trouble for Korea rather than giving comfort to China. It's worth noting, too, that China is in deflation, Choilova says. The official gross domestic product deflator, she adds, fell in both the second quarter and third quarter by an average of 1.5%.